So today's topic is <clears throat> something that we think about but not talk about so much and sometimes we want to have answers to these questions but we don't really go into it deeply. So I had to think about this topic also. <laughs> it was very interesting. So what is destiny? And the title also says, is this a chance or choice? So in the dictionary, destiny is stated as something that, that is to happen. And it is something that's predetermined. So it's inevitable course of events we cannot prevent or we cannot foresee. And the power that determines the course of events is also called destiny. It is also called the fate. Fate could be like a consequence, outcome, after effect. Sometimes one thing happens and that leads to another thing. It's like a chain reaction. Sometimes um, the action causes some other things to happen, like a repercussion. It's also called kismet. It's the will of Allah, divine ordained fate. So God is involved in it. <laughs> it's something that's already fixed, recorded and registered. And so it sounds like that it's already fixed. Therefore, we don't have any control over it. But then uh, sometimes I hear people use the word destiny. Like um, some years ago when this student, it was a sister who took the course and Rajoga meditation course and after a while she was coming to listen to the knowledge still and she was enjoying it very much but then one day she came back and said oh um, I was destined to get married so she got married and she seemed very happy so we were happy for her so when she said I was destined to get married, I thought maybe my interpretation was so then she couldn't help getting married. Right? There was some kind of force that pushed her to go into marriage. But she was still planning that, planning to get married, intending to make things happen so it is therefore she was causing it to happen so what she wanted to see it happen in herself happened because she worked towards that vision of getting married so even though she used the word destiny I felt like, okay, she was making it to happen. So it's not that somebody, some other divine force was controlling everything. She was part of the process of the outcome. And sometimes you hear things like, oh, he wants to be in control of his own destiny. Okay, if the destiny is already laid out for him, can he still control it? Does it mean that he can change the course of his life in the middle of what's happening? So then he has the power to make decisions about his own life. 
So that is still not forced or preordained or fixed. He was trying to control. He was trying to gain control, maybe, so he can shape his life. And sometimes there's a quote like, I believe there is some force guiding us. Call it God, destiny, or fate. And so who can control events that happen in our lives? Is it God or is it my own power? So I keep thinking about these statements and people's comments and um, in Raja Yoga, we learn about karma philosophy. So we do believe that whatever action we perform, we receive equal or opposite reaction to it. So in order to understand what these statements actually mean, we need to first understand what happens in our minds. So I'd like to show you this illustration. And it's a wonderful illustration of what happens. Let me just share it with you. Okay, I'll close this. Okay, <laughs> this is from a book called The Illustrations on Raja Yoga. And so um, there is a person who once has been bitten by a dog. And so since then, every time he sees a dog on the street, his consciousness becomes occupied with the past memory of a dog biting him. So this consciousness affects his feelings, the mode of or state of mind. So that consciousness is the first one. Consciousness could be awareness and the state of being is maybe fearful the mode of the mind would be like a repulsion towards dogs so it might be nervousness So his thoughts are created with fear, aversion, caution, and etc. And so this attitude, that's the second stage, brings about change in the outlook, which is the next one, it's called the vision. Vision is how you see the world. And so um, because the mode of mind, the attitude is colored in one way or the other, because of the consciousness, the memory of being bitten by a dog, everything goes in this like a chain reaction. And so you see the world as somewhere dangerous. If the dogs are around, you have to be cautious. And so because of that vision, the outlook, if you actually see a dog on the street, this person will react 
either chasing the dog away or attacking the dog or running from it. And so all of these series of events, they happen in a split of a second. And so the time between each one, one to the other, you cannot really see a gap. It just happens naturally and very quickly. And so this action of either chasing the dog or hitting or running away from it gives an impression, leaves an impression in that person. And that is called a sanskara. Some of you may have heard sanskaras. And sometimes the sanskara can be transformed. Sometimes you can let go of the fear, let go of the repulsion. Sometimes you change attitude towards the dog or overcome fear. Then the sanskaras can be changed. But unless it's transformed, it becomes like a springboard for another action to take place. So the similar situations will happen again in the future. You will face similar situation and you will react in a very same way. So it goes in this <laughs> circular motion it's like you get stuck in this motion and you cannot get out of it and so um, even when it doesn't manifest in the physical sense the scene the fear of the dog and running away from the dog it could manifest even in the form of dreams. So that's this picture at the end. He is dreaming about the fearful dog attacking him again. So everything starts from the consciousness. And this uh, mechanism of the mind is very interesting. Um, I was looking at this picture. What is that? And the consciousness is inside of each one of us. And so once the consciousness, the awareness is set, then it moves, uh, moves these, uh, what do you call this little, <laughs> the, the round uh, disc, I know there's a name for it. And then it turns in one direction, and then it is chakra. It yeah, is chakra. It is chakra in Hindi, yes. <laughs> if it goes this way, and the other one goes the other direction, you know, and then that will move the other one that's connected to the previous one. So it is just like uh, this wheel of the you know consciousness the aspects that happen in the mind one thing will lead to the another and it gets strengthened if you keep doing the same things having the th same thoughts same attitude same vision the outlook and performing same actions, the sanskaras of fear or whatever it is, they get strengthened. 
And so uh, once I heard this story about uh, an office uh, in Japan, uh, they put this one room where the uh, employees can go and um, like a hit, like a mattress or something with a bat whenever um, they felt frustrated or angry but could not express it and so they could go into this room and then beat the mat so that they kind of let go of the anger or frustration. So temporarily it was working and then what happened was because people were expressing anger in that way with the action of hitting the mat what happens when you perform action the impression is made in the consciousness that is called the sanskara and so the sanskara of getting angry and beating the mat was becoming stronger so even though in the office people are not arguing or fighting physically people are expressing anger with hitting that mat in that little room they become more aggressive and so this is not the way to reduce anger or frustration and so what can we do what is the way to overcome some of negative state of mind attitude or outlook in life or actions sometimes we say something that's also an action we have to have some ways to remedy these things so let me stop sharing this one and it's very interesting that um, we think we understand our mind because we always have thoughts in our mind but then we don't really uh, understand how to um, manage what comes in what stays and what goes out and so everything like I said before in order to transform the actions behavior the outlook vision or state of mind make the mind eternally happy the consciousness must be transformed and so um, our teachings is called the Raja Yoga meditation and so the consciousness can be transformed through our meditation practice and all living beings all of us we have consciousness that makes us react in many many different ways to various stimuli either externally or internally and so the consciousness sometimes manifests in the form of thoughts understanding feelings of happiness or sorrow or self-awareness so inside of the consciousness there are three things there is the mind the mind is where we create thoughts 
and there is the intelligent part it's called the intellect when in intellect works it works as making decisions understanding making judgment discerning so uh, it performs the function of understanding what's happening and the memory and the impression it's store it's stored the information that's called the sanskaras so the sanskara affects the thoughts and the judgment so again same thing as the the film wheel so what is consciousness so consciousness is capable of thinking of the future and it can also store memories of the past and also past lives too it transcends time it acts and reacts through the body through our brain it can make extra sensory perceptions and precognitions so it's not something gross or material but it is very subtle and we also call it the soul so it is non-physical and beyond time so we are talking about something we cannot even see or touch or grab it throw it away or keep it it is not tangible but yet the soul is eternal it cannot be recreated or destroyed it's just like um in the science they say the smallest uh, part of the atom it's never been created nor destroyed it always exists so it's like if you take an apple and if you cut the apple in half you have two halves and then if you take that half and again you cut in half again you have two pieces so if you keep doing that if you always cut something in half you always have two pieces and then it'll become very small you can't even see it but you can still cut it and it never disappears so the soul is like that and it's because we cannot see we cannot touch we cannot prove where it is the science has not quite come up with any kind of concrete you know report or writings about it but when i learned about what the soul is what the consciousness is what is mind intellect what is sanskaras i thought this is a very good information and it is not taught in school yet i'm learning this for free nobody has charged me for anything of this knowledge and it makes me feel like relieved like oh okay that is what it is 
I do not know anything of this soul, but I'm glad I have the information now because then I can process information in a very different way, non-physical, non-material, uh, very subtle, and extremely easy. We didn't think so before, how to overcome emotions, how to overcome bad memories of the past, how to respond to people who are not so nice to us. All of these things I used to wonder. Now it is easy if we have the right information about who we are. We are the consciousness. Consciousness is all these wonderful things. It is invisible, yet it's imperishable. And now I'm able to get a hold of my thoughts, my emotions, and maybe the outcome of my actions. If I can control my consciousness, then I can make my own destiny. And what happens is not just knowing about the soul or consciousness, but when the soul receives the knowledge of the divine, knowledge of God, and recognizes the thoughts and the memories of God, develops faith in God, and develops deep love for God, the intellect and the mind is connected to God. So the link, the connection, the union with divine, that is called Raja Yoga. Raja Yoga. Yoga means uh, in English, we call it yoke, right? This yoke between the two wheels. When the yoke is straight and connecting the two wheels, the wheels can turn smoothly and you can move forward. And so yoga is like the yoke that connects the soul to the supreme soul. And so, like I mentioned earlier, in Raja Yoga, we study karma philosophy. So that would lead to, am I responsible for my destiny? So there are four things that's very important to know. Uh, first one, you are free. You are free to make decisions about what actions to perform. You have the complete freedom. Nobody else can make you mad, actually. Nobody else can force you to become sorry for yourself, become angry, become depressed, or whatever it is, you have the freedom to make decisions. Number two, you have all the choices in life. That is sometimes hard to believe, but you do have choices in life, choices in life. And 
What about I was born in this family and I did not have choice. I was born there. My parents, I did not choose my parents or my family members and relatives. But actually, we, we don't remember. But the soul has all the information recorded within that is also called sanskaras. Sanskaras go with the soul each time the soul takes birth into a human body. And so whatever um, sanskaras that's within the um, the sanskaras and the karmic actions the accumulation of the actions from the past they will determine what kind of life you're going to have next so that itself makes us feel okay then I am responsible right whatever I do today it's going to affect who I am tomorrow who I am going to be in the future so it is my responsibility so that is the third one so you have choices in life and then you are responsible for your choices once you make the choice once you perform an action you become responsible and so even though somebody provoked you to feel this way or that way and you reacted this way or that way and you feel like, oh, this one made me so angry. I became so upset. But it was my reaction. It was my decision to react. I could have stayed calm. I could have walked away I could have smiled and changed the subject or changed the outlook changed the attitude I could have done all of these but I chose to get upset I chose to go into depression I chose to feel sorry for myself so once you choose the action or reaction you become responsible I become responsible and the last one you must face the consequence of your actions so in Hindi karma we say karma but Karma means actions. So every time you perform actions, you are performing your karma. So you must face the consequence of your karma. So going back to the first point, if we know we are free, And if we have all the choices in life, we are free to choose whatever words, whatever actions. It is like uh, at any given moment, you are standing at the crossroad of every which direction. You can turn right, you can turn left, you can move forward, you can go backwards, or you can stay 
where you are. You don't have to move either. That's also a choice. You can run, you can walk, you can ignore. You can jump into the water, start swimming. The choice is ours. And so we understand that every time we choose an action, choose a karma, then we are responsible. So am I responsible for my destiny? Who is creating the destiny? Some events cannot be predicted or avoided. Accidents happen. And sometimes, you know, when you're trying to get somewhere, you have an appointment and you try to get there, but something happens that you just cannot get going. Every time you try to move forward and there's an obstacle. This happens quite often. I'm sure you have experiences too. Recently, um, I had a performance coming up and I had to carry my instrument. So I had to drive. So I loaded everything ahead of time and I was going to leave at a certain time and I started the car, I opened the garage door and then somebody was parked in the driveway blocking my way and I could not quite maneuver to go to the other side of the driveway because there was another car parked in next to it. And so I had to look for that person who parked there in the driveway and I have to politely ask that person to move the vehicle, find parking on the street, or I usually say, when I get out, you can claim this spot back. It's just I need some, I need to have you move the car right now. And so that takes about five minutes or so. And then you get going, but then the traffic is slow. Every turn you make, there is some kind of blockage or obstacles. And then you start to think, okay, I think this is meant to be. So I just stop fighting to be there on time. I made my effort. I, <laughs> I did my best. And oftentimes, if I stay calm and have the attitude, it's going to be okay. I just apologize for my delay. And then oftentimes when I get to my destination, people at the other end was also getting late. So it was not a big thing. I remember one time um, on the second day of um, school, I was when I used to teach in the school district, we have meetings for three days, just the teachers, before students come back to schools. Second day, we were meeting at one of the art museums in downtown San Francisco. And I thought I could get a parking on the street because I usually find parking close to where I have to go. So I was not worried. But this was downtown. It's very different from 
other streets that I was used to. And so there will be mostly no parking or one hour parking or maybe 30 minutes parking. Or so it's not enough time for the morning session. So anyway, I went around and around and around, still hoping I could find something. And then somehow I took a turn and I ended up on the freeway. I was supposed to be in the meeting in about maybe 20 minutes or so. And I was going towards the Bay Bridge, going towards the East Bay. <laughs> and in the panicking mode of the mind, I could not figure out to turn around from one of those islands. <laughs> So I ended up in uh, Oakland or someplace all the way and I thought, okay, I don't know how to turn around. It's too late. So I just, at that moment, I just let go. <laughs> I gave up being in the meeting on time. So I said, okay, I am on the freeway going to the East Bay, so might as well enjoy the ride. <laughs> So I just decided to enjoy driving and it's okay if I'm late, I'm not in accident or anything, I'm okay. So I actually enjoyed, I got to the place where I could turn around and came back and I actually had to come home because I figured there's no parking close to where I had to go. So then I <laughs> parked the car, got on the bus, <laughs> and I rode the bus to the museum. And everybody was in the meeting, but you know, sometimes it's not like a very quiet, Everybody's focusing, that kind of meeting. It was like more like an interactive. Somebody was uh, giving a workshop type of thing, showing the slides and things, and people having uh, breakfast at the same time. So it was not uh, uh, very embarrassing uh, for me to uh, sneak in from the back late. And so I just mentioned to my supervisor and some people that why I was late and it was okay. So um, when things like this happen in life, we also call it a drama. So we don't call it destiny. We say a drama is accurate. Drama is also beneficial. Whatever happens in the drama is beneficial and drama is benevolent. How can drama be benevolent? Does it have a feeling? No, it is actually completely perfect. Whatever is happening is happening. It's because it is the best at that right moment. So again, understanding the karma philosophy, understanding the consciousness, the soul, the different things that we do in the process of making decisions, choosing words and actions, made me feel very light and very uh, carefree, like not so uh, heavy in many things. I used to be more worried, I think, and more conscious of, oh, I have to do this and this is the only way 
But now I feel okay. If there was nobody who can comfort me of my frustration or uh, some situations, then I have to come up with something. And meditation really helps me to calm myself down. Although I'm not talking to someone, sometimes talking to people helps. Uh, letting things out and having someone listen to your stories really helps. But these days, people don't have time, right? People are busy, people are sincere, but they just don't have time. They may have maybe five minutes to listen to your story. They may not want to listen to uh, somebody else's problems. So what do we do? We talk to God. We can have conversations with God. And sometimes, uh, you know, after talking to God, after uh, <laughs> loading everything you wanted to dump, you stay quiet, not just physically, but also in the mind. And you start to listen. And how do you know God is speaking to you? Well, it happens in a very subtle way. Sometimes it happens uh, not through words. Sometimes you see a symbol. Sometimes you hear something from uh, somewhere. And that uh, gives you some kind of indication, some message. Sometimes you look up and there, there are some words or sentences or phrase or some slogans you see. And that is exactly what you needed to see at that moment. So I feel it's a divine intervention. God is, you know, looking after me. And I always feel that in a very subtle way. We don't talk about it so much or share so much, but it happens a lot. And sometimes it uh, happens in the music too. I hear music all the time. And sometimes new new music comes. And if I have some pencil or something, I write it down. Or sometimes I record it. Otherwise, it's gone. It was just that moment I hear music. And it, it's, it could be a greatest song of the century or something. And so I just write it down very little part of it and then when I have time I look at it and I develop from that little motif and it becomes a song and that is like I don't know where it's coming from I think it's coming from God <laughs> and so I'm sure you experience these things too you know something that happens in a very subtle way and how do we become more subtle? And subtlety is a very beautiful thing to experience because then we are letting go of grossness of the body, of the physical world, of the materials or desires. Uh, when you become subtle, you're not thinking about all these things. So thinking about someone, thinking about a bad past is also uh, physical we call it body consciousness because it is about the body that somebody is a human being past is also uh, body consciousness um, memories that we 
you know, keep playing in the tape recorder. Again, we have the choice to stop that tape recorder. But uh, once it gets going, it's hard to stop. And that is because we are getting more and more body conscious and it just gets going and going. And so to become subtle, we need help from God. We need help from the divine source. And the best time to receive the powers, the spiritual powers, not physical powers, but subtle powers, is the early morning. And some of you probably wake up early to do prayers or some kind of rituals or exercise or breathing. I'm sure you're doing this already. Because you know, when you get up early in the morning, uh, you feel very refreshed because it's very quiet in the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is subtle. Not everybody is waking up, so it is, uh, you know, there's no commotion, so much commotion. So the, the yoke, remember we talked about the yoke between the soul and the supreme soul? It is straight up to the Supreme Soul because there's no interference of, you know, all these different waves <laughs> because it's early in the morning. So that is the best time to have the yoke, yoga, meditation, connection, union with God. And you can have very sweet conversations with God. And you don't have to say anything uh, verbally. You can converse with God in your mind. Of course, if there's no one around, you can say it out loud. But it's usually just your thoughts, communicating through the thoughts. And uh, this practice of communicating through the thoughts also makes you more subtle. So um, I'd like to share this uh, little handout also. It is called Thoughts Create a Destiny because we're talking about destiny today. Okay, let me see. Okay. Thoughts create our destiny. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. So thoughts create our destiny. Everything, every action starts from a seed of thoughts. You create thoughts first and that manifests in the physical sense. So if we learn to manage our thoughts, then we can create our lives to be very enjoyable, peaceful, truthful, the way we want to live our lives. And 
we understand that sometimes when um, things happen unexpectedly or not as we wanted and in the process looking back later on you may notice that you had some negative seed of thoughts or something that you didn't like something you felt repulsed about some negative uh, aspects you were creating it could be a very very tiny seeds and again we are talking about something we cannot see and it could be just a flash of a second and we couldn't even remember we did it but it went through the mind and so the thoughts got created and so the thoughts can become your attitude too so the consciousness the soul we have to really understand how to manage our thoughts so I'm going to stop here now you can just keep this so that if you wanted to save it you can any question or any comment Kyoko. Yes. Yes. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Um, well, this has been lovely. And um, I was highly entertained by your traveling down into the city. <laughs> <laughs> I could really relate. Um, but really enjoyed uh, how you handled it. Um, <laughs> because that's that's the thing isn't it um how to handle when it's beyond what you thought it was going to be yes, yes. and i thought well aren't you persevering be not only did you decide to enjoy the ride you went back to the center got a got a parking space <laughs> And then took a bus. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't give up. <laughs> that was remarkable. Thank you for sharing that. That was uh, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to look like I skipped the meeting. So I think in, in that case, it was better to attend and late, but attend than not to go at all. <laughs> so that's why I made a choice there. Yes, thank you. Anyone else like to ask any question? Do you feel like you It is it is always to share any of your you know, feelings to someone and you rightly said it it people don't have time listen our feelings and what whatever dispute or uh, any hurt and which makes you to react but if any hurt received from known person who is standing next to you so i think it is better to speak out instead of accumulating it and that will give relief to that person as well as a person who got hurt. 
this is what I feel. Mm, yes. Yeah, choose the right moment to discuss. Right time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thank Wonderful. You. <laughs> and that ride, I like it. I like it, right? Because I always get tense when I see that there's a no U-turn or no turning back to the destination, which we may miss. Yes. To go ahead without any worries. Yeah, we have to enjoy whatever mistakes we make. <laughs> it is not mistake, but that is, you know, <laughs> rules. Rules abide you. So we have to follow rules also. Yes. Yeah. It was a good experience, actually. Then I get to talk about it and share this with all of you. So. It was not <laughs> it's not nice. Yeah, it was not like a negative it. thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Some of you are joining from East Coast or overseas. <laughs> Wonderful to have you join today. So no questions. Om Shanti. Yes. Hello. Om Shanti. I'm not sure if you guys see if you if you all see um my name, but I'm Ariel. Ariel, I yes. usually yes. I usually speak. <laughs> Hello. Um, I just wanted to share uh, just what I'm going through as well, my personal journey that I'm on right now. Um, it's so overwhelming at times, um, just to center myself back to where I, I honestly need to be. Um, like I said before, especially with, with what's going on in the world right now, um, it's so hard not to focus on on others and just you know, just give your all. And now I'm trying to like focus that inward and and find find my myself and my peace because truly I I honestly feel like there's no way there's no way you can get to know uh yourself by, by looking outward. And I love how um how you were saying about this whole uh the thoughts create our destiny um i had i had seen this a while ago and you know i had it had me thinking and it's so funny how it, it came up today <laughs> and you you shared more about it it's 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 fate it's destiny <laughs> it's it's destiny because it's like everything that's going on like i said in my personal journey like just my thoughts alone, it, it honestly truly brought me here today, you know? Um, um, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to God every day. Um, yeah, but I'm so, I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Good. So you uh, join the workshop regularly with us? Yes, I, um, I usually come here regularly. Um, oh, okay. Oh, sorry from the sorry for the motorcycles. <laughs> I'm in New York. <laughs> yeah, I feel that uh, you are very compassionate. Just by listening to you speak, you're very caring, and you want to take care of the people around you. But it is also important to take care of ourselves too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh, thank you for your gratitude. Thank you for expressing that today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Shanice, is that your name? Yeah, that's oh. me. Okay. Um, so I had a, 
a question. Go ahead. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, so when these thoughts come about, do you would you say it's necessarily a bad thing? Because I feel that when we have these thoughts, it's a chance to listen to our body and acknowledge it and get to the root of what's actually going on. So I don't think that by dismissing the thoughts or avoiding it or ruminating on it, it it doesn't allow room to expand on those thoughts. I think it's important to sit with those thoughts. Yeah, I think um, it is important to take care of both the body and the soul. You know, uh, we consider them to be separate. So the consciousness, the soul is moving the body the physical so the non-physical yeah. is who we are and the body is just like our instrument right yeah yeah so we have to take care of our instrument too we cannot neglect <laughs> our instrument like uh, sometimes i hear someone says like Oh, I eat whatever I want. Yep. It doesn't matter. But then uh, that person becomes sick because, you know, whatever you want, you're eating, sometimes that's not a good thing for the body. So we have to, you know, this is the power of discernment that happens in the intellect. We have to decide what is good for me, how much is good for me, so that the body is taken care of. Because if anything goes wrong with the body, the pain or suffering, we, we may be occupied with that. And so then it's hard to go back to the consciousness of being a soul. So then that's hard to meditate. If we keep having the pain, or if we keep having some discomfort, uh, it um, it does not feel good. So we need to take care of both. Yeah, and that's something I struggle with is my um my unhealthy eating habits. Uh huh. That's yeah. One of my biggest struggles because when I'm like bored or anything, I just eat and the things that I consume are not good <laughs> yeah so then remember the karma philosophy first two you have the freedom and the you are free to choose yeah of course you know you have to know the other two that you are responsible once you choose and you will face the consequence of your karma Yes. So if we understand all these four, freedom, choice, responsibility, consequences, then you will think twice about it, right? Before you reach out <laughs> to the Swedes, you will, your conscience will talk to you and say, okay, no, that's not good for me right now. I'm not going to even think about it <laughs> yep. you have to maybe yeah stay away from it out of sight out of mind yes you have to be strong in making decisions at that time so how do you strengthen your intellect because that is the faculty that makes uh, decisions is to do more meditation so whatever I spoke today that is the information you need the information in order to do meditation but also you need to do 
med uh, meditation so that um, your understanding, your powers to make decisions will increase. So you have to have both. Yeah. So, yeah, start meditating more and, you know, maybe you can take the Raja Yoga course. We offer Raja Yoga course uh, every month except for this month. Uh, next month we are offering it from I think the first Thursday maybe October so you can sign okay. up yeah I will yeah it'll be good for you you will understand about yourself more yeah I believe so yes Very good. Thank you for sharing. It takes courage to share, right? <laughs> yeah, especially food. <laughs> About food, yes. Food is a big issue for everyone. Yeah. Yes. And it has uh, emotions attached to it. So it, it takes, you know, a lot of courage to change our habits or attitudes towards food yeah okay everyone i think it's past eight o'clock so let us have just the uh, music again and sister elizabeth would you like to make an announcement I'm not sure if she's still listening. I will go ahead and start the music and uh, give you a short commentary. I pay attention to my thoughts in the mind. Am I thinking mundane thoughts? Something that happened in the past. Am I having negative emotions and feelings about the past? Slowly let go one by one. I don't need to hang on to. any negative, useless thoughts, feelings and emotions.
From today, I create positive, uplifting, elevated thoughts. Thoughts of peace, thoughts of happiness, Thoughts of courage, determination, and I empower myself I create thoughts and my thoughts become my destiny. I, the soul, am the creator of my thoughts. And I experience something wonderful through my positive thoughts. As my awareness so the state of my mind my attitude my vision world and I understand the philosophy of karma I am completely free to choose my thoughts, my actions. I take responsibility in my choices and I face the consequences of my actions. I have God as my guiding light and 
always connected to the light. Om Shanti. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.